اجتنای ایالات متحده آمریکا اجلاس استماع وزارت خارجه در کمیته خارجی پرونده اتمی رژیم و فریبکاری آخوند روحانی قتل عام و گروگانگیری در اشرف و حفاظت لیبرتی سوم اکتبر 2013 یازده مهر 92 پشتارهای شدید و لحن سناتور منندز رئیس کمیته خارجی سنا و سناتور مکین درباره تعهدات آمریکا نسبت به حفاظت از اشرفی ها در لیبرتی و سرنوشت هفت گروگان And let me also caution that the seven hostages, which we believe the Iraqi government knows where they are, should they die, would be complicating matters for all of that. Now there was a murder of, I believe, 51 uh, uh, people who were members of this camp, and many of them had in their possession guarantees from the United States of America that they would not be harmed. What, what lesson does that send to, to people who we say will be under our protection? تأکید سناتور مکین بر تعهدات حفاظتی آمریکا به اشرفی ها و تهدید به قطع کمک های آمریکا به عراق در صورت ادامه بدرفتاری با مجاهدین And I hope that this issue will be raised with the Iraqi government and we in Congress may have to look at the kind of aid and how we are extending that to Iraq if this kind of thing is going to be countenanced by the uh, Iraqi government. The United States of America, is it true, gave them an assurance that if they moved that they would be protected. We know that the Iranian influence has dramatically increased in, uh, in Iraq. سناتور منندز رئیس کمیته خارجی سنای آمریکا ما در ازای گرفتن سلاح مجاهدین تعهد حفاظت دادیم ولی این حفاظت انجام نشده است از دست دادن یک نفر دیگر غیر قابل قبول است این کمیته قدرت فروش سلاح را دارد و بسیار تردید دارم که فروش هر گونه سلاح به عراق را تایید کند. You know, Amer America went to the MEK and we said disarm and we will protect you. And then we ultimately left and that protection has not been there. But it is unacceptable to lose one more life uh, when American commanders gave these individuals a written guarantee towards their safety. And it sends a message to others in the world that when we say we are going to do that and we do not, that they should not trust us. And for one thing that this committee can do, since it has jurisdiction over all weapons sales, is that I doubt very much that we are going to see any approval of any weapons sales to Iraq until we get this situation in a place in which people's lives are saved. وندی شرمن معاون وزیر خارجه آمریکا با آنچه سناتور مکین گفت کاملا موافق هستم میدانم که در اینجا احساسات قوی نسبت به این موضوع وجود دارد و من علت آن را درک می کنم We uh, quite agree and uh, what Senator McCain said we quite agree uh, that we need uh, to do everything we can to resettle people, to get them out of harm's way, uh, to make good on the word that we gave uh, to the MEK. I know that there are strong feelings up here, and I understand. I think there's a question in the minds of many of us about credibility. Um, back in um, Mr. Rouhani is one of the most trusted figures of the Islamic regime's supreme leader. Uh, 
he's been the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, and as we know, he also served as a negotiator. Um, and then on an a, a, a re- interview that he gave, uh, which is out there on the Internet, Quote, the day that we invited the three European ministers, only ten centrifuges were spinning at the Iranian nuclear facility. Rouhani boasted on, on the tape, we could not produce one gram of U4 or U6. We did not have the heavy water production. We could not produce yellow cake. Our total production of centrifuges inside the country was 150. But then Rouhani admitted in the video the purpose of pro- prolonging negotiations, quote, we wanted to complete all of these, we needed time. He said three European ministers promised to block U.S. efforts to transfer the Iranian nuclear dossier to the United Nations using veto power as necessary. He called Iran's claim that it stopped its nuclear program in 2003, a statement for the uneducated, and admitted that the program not only continued, but was significantly expanded under his, temp- under his tenure. In the interview, Rouhani said that after he took over the country's nuclear project, the country's 150 grew to 1,700 by the time he left the project. Then Rouhani made his boldest statement, we did not stop, we completed the program. Now, we're supposed to trust this guy? Sa- what, what possible confidence do you have in this individual? And this situation is a result to the Camp Ashraf people. Um, We know that they were Iranian dissidents. At one point, they were designated as a terrorist organization. But the United States of America, is it true, gave them an assurance that if they moved, that they would be protected. We know that the Iranian influence has dramatically increased in, uh, in Iraq. In fact, we know now that uh, Al-Qaeda is, is alive and well and doing extremely well moving back and forth across the two countries. Now there was a murder of, I believe, 51 uh, uh, people who were members of this camp and many of them had in their possession guarantees from the United States of America that they would not be harmed. Um, what, what, what less? Are, first of all, are those facts true? And second of all, if true, what, what lesson does that send to, to people who we say will be under our protection? Senator, uh, I share your deep concern about what happened uh, at Camp Ashraf. This was a vicious attack on September 1st, and many lives were lost. And the U.S. continues to press the government of Iraq at every opportunity, at at the most senior levels, to ensure the safety and security of residents at Camp Huria, where many of uh, the MEK uh, were moved for uh, better safety. We strongly and swiftly condemned the attack. We, of course, extend our condolences to the victims' families, and we are working with the government of Iraq and the United Nations Assistance Mission for Iraq, UNAMI, to peacefully and voluntarily transfer the surviving residents to safety at Camp Horea on September 12th. Uh, And we are working for the protection of the people in Camp Horea because we do not want a repeat of this. So to date, uh, the government of Iran, of Iraq has moved in over 700 large T-walls, over 500 bunkers, over 600 small T-walls, and nearly 50,000 sandbags. UN monitors visit the camp daily in accordance with the MOU to assess human rights and humanitarian conditions. But I must say, Senator, the real answer to this, to the safety and security of all of the people in the camps, who wants to live in a camp, is resettlement. Uh, to third countries, to get out of Iraq and to get out of harm's way. And I would call on all of the people who are here today representing the rights and the interests of the MEK and the leaders of the MEK in the camps and in Paris uh, to allow this resettlement to go forward because until the resettlement happens, uh, safety and security is going to be at risk. We will do everything in our power to keep people safe in these camps. Uh, But as you point out, the al-Qaeda threat is increasing in Iraq, uh, and it is difficult. And I hope that this issue will be raised with the Iraqi government, and we in Congress may have to look at 
the kind of aid and how we are extending that to Iraq if this kind of thing is going to be countenanced by the uh, Iraqi government. And I, I don't, I used up all my time. I thank you for your response. Before I turn to Senator Murkin, let me echo what Senator McCain has said in this regard, and I put out a statement in this regard. I've also talked to our department. You know, Amer America went to the MEK and we said, disarm and we will protect you. And then we ultimately left, and that protection has not been there. You can put up, I don't care how many tons of sandbags, but when elements of the Iranian, excuse me, of the uh, Iraqi forces actually may very well be complicit in what took place, it is, sandbags aren't going to take care of the problem. And I agree with you that resettlement is a critical part. Maybe the United States could be part of leading the way in saying to an, a universe of these individuals that, uh, in fact, you can be resettled to the United States and that would get the rest of the world to offer further resettlement. But it is unacceptable to lose one more life uh, when American commanders gave these individuals a written guarantee towards their safety. And it sends a message to others in the world that when we say we are going to do that and we do not, that they should not trust us. And for one thing that this committee can do, since it has jurisdiction over all weapons sales, is that I doubt very much that we are going to see any approval of any weapons sales to Iraq until we get this situation in a place in which people's lives are saved. If I may, Senator, I'd also like to take the opportunity to, to comment on uh, what you said about Iraq. Uh, and we uh, quite agree, and uh, what Senator McCain said, we quite agree uh, that we need uh, to do everything we can to resettle people, to get them out of harm's way, uh, to make good on the word that we gave uh, to the MEK. I know that there are strong feelings up here, and I understand why, about arms sales to Iraq. Uh, but I do want to put on the record that U.S. security assistance and foreign military sales in particular are tools that we use for building and shaping Iraq's defense capabilities and integrating Iraqi security forces with our security forces and regional partners. And I just want to caution that withholding security assistance may well serve to decrease our influence in Baghdad seed relationships and leverage to strategic competitors who will fill the vacuum and could conceivably damage our long-term interests. So I just ask that we talk well, very me, carefully let me, let me as caution, we go forward. Let me caution you uh, about the overflights uh, that Iraq has permitted uh, from Iran uh, into Syria, uh, with largely with impunity. Uh, and let me also caution that the seven hostages, which we believe the Iraqi government knows where they are, should they die, would be complicating matters for all of that. So I hope that we've both cautioned each other. I, I quite uh, agree with you on both issues. Let me uh, close.